You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. And now it's time for the show that breaks down the options market from unusual activity alerts to market analysis, strategy overviews, listener questions, and much more. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block with your host, Mark Longo from the Options Insider Media Group and co-hosts Uncle Mike Tussaud from RCM Asset Management, Andrew the Rock Lobster Joe Venazzi from OptionPit.com, and Mark the Greasy Meatball Sebastian from OptionPit.com. And now, get ready to hit the Option Block. All right, ladies and gents, that music means it's time once again to hang out with the Option Block All-Star Crew. This is time for the Option Block. My name is Mark Longo from the old optionsinsider.com. Hope you've been there. If you haven't been there in a while, you know, it's, it's I know you guys like, you like to mainline the audio wherever you are, commuting out and about hither and yon. We understand it. We like you. We built a whole business on you guys for over a decade now. Uh, but of course, the website's fun too. A lot of you guys like to go there too when you're throughout the day working, trading, checking out the stuff. A lot of un unusual activity, education, easy for me to say today, alerts, all that fun stuff. You can get it all there. Links to all the shows, of course, goes way back deep into the archives of the network. So you can do some nice, uh, nice, nice tours through the history of the options market, at least for the last decade, which is pretty much the entire history of options podcasting because we kind of created it. So uh, the last 11 years is pretty much it. So you want a nice tour of what's been popular, what's been big, what's been driving the narrative in the world of options for the last, oh, decade or plus, go check out our archives. It's all there for your perusing leisure. Of course, you get the recent stuff, iTunes, TuneIn, Stitcher, all that good stuff, as well as, of course, super uber recent as in in your ear holes right now via Mixler every Monday and Thursday, 3 p.m. Central, 4 p.m. Eastern. You know how to get it, set it, and forget it. And however you listen, live after the fact, however you get it, make sure you hit us up, questions, comments, insights, all that good stuff. We do enjoy hearing from you guys every blue moon or so. All right. Just kidding. Hit us up. You guys love to. And I'd hate to stop that. All right. And joining me on the old program today, let's spin the dial. Let's see who's back in town. Let's see who's alive. Let's see who's not dead at a Costco near you. Let's start off first in the uh, in the scenic environs outside of Chicago, where I think today the weather shield may have broken down, getting more snow in April in Chicago than we got in like December, January, and February combined. I don't know what the heck's going on. It's kind of weird. We had a pretty mild winter until April. Who knew April was the was the craziest of winter months? But say lobby. I digress. I am joined by Uncle Mike Tusaw from RCM Wealth Advisors. Uncle Mike, how goes the weather shield in St. Charles, sir? I had a little bit of snow on the ground today but nothing too crazy uh but always happy to be here and excited about another day of the option block speaking of excitement are you up for a new uh, monday edition of the strategy block today sir let's do this all right so put your thinking pants on think of some fun ideas we didn't have a chance to tweet it out it is such a new thing so we'll leave you to your own devices for today for what you want to choose hopefully something crazy but we'll see when we get there in about half an hour or so and let's also spin the wheel oh i guess he's back you know, the, the rumors are not true. <laughs> or I should say the rumors are true. Or maybe perhaps, depends the way you go, maybe the rumors are unfounded that he never leaves because he did leave once. And now he's back in Maine. Yes, he is the Rock Lobster. He's back in his hermit crab shell, back where he belongs in Maine, Mr. Andrew Giovinazzi. Mr. G, welcome back to the show. What's going on with this you leaving Maine? Uh, you know, dogs and cats living together. The world had turned upside down, sir. <laughs> um... You know, it is okay to leave Maine in uh, late March and early April because that's mud season. There's an actual mud season. You didn't know there was five seasons in Maine, but there is. Um, so it is okay to leave. I actually uh, I went to speak to uh, some option trading groups in 
uh, the Silicon Valley. It was a quite a it was quite a good time, I have to say. Let me guess. They're all like, how do I hedge my eight bazillion contracts of Google slash Microsoft slash Facebook? <laughs> um, they actually did not ask that question in particular. They're all uh, they all actually quite a few had their own ideas about different stuff. So um, it was not as much of a uh, technology stock a thon as you would think. So a little surprising on that front, but uh, there then again, there you have it. That's what that's what it was. That is surprising because the uh, the San Fran crowd tends to be a little bit monolithic in what they're interested in. In that, hey, I got eight bazillion shares of XYZ tech stock. I need to hedge it. How do I do that? And you teach them the magic of buying puts, and everyone's excited. Uh, so it's interesting to see that they're moving beyond that very basic but very sizable use case for a lot of people on there. Speaking of moving on, let's move on right on into the trading block. It's time to break down the latest topics, trades, and trends in the world of options. It's time for The Trading Block. All right, everybody. Welcome to The Trading Block. The name says it all. This is the portion of the show where uh, the Rock Lobster, Uncle Mike, and I do trades for the NFL draft ahead of time, back and forth to each other for an entire hour. It's glorious. No, of course, this is the portion of the show. Uncle Mike might like that, though. <laughs> but this is the portion of the show where we break down what was actually trading uh, in the market today. And I think the technical term for what was going on out there was A, rally ho mode, or B, if you're looking at the volatility space, just freaking smackdown palooza of epic proportions. Because, man, they came for it, and they ca it came for it hard. Uh, of course, we are recording this, streaming it live on Monday, the 16th, tax day, because uh, the 15th was on a weekend. So if you haven't gotten your returns out, maybe you're listening to us while you're doing a little bit of last-minute debits and credits there on the old return, then have fun. Enjoy that good stuff. Always a fun day here in the U.S. Uh, but, yes, the market's like in tax day today, uh, with most of the major indices up about a percent or pretty close to it, pretty much across the board. That means all that green means VIX took a freaking drubbing today. VIX cash shy of 16 and a half uh, to end up the day off pretty much a handle uh, just just taking it on the chin, left, right, and center today. They they came for these futures in just uh, the front month future off one one point three handles, uh, doing ninety five thousand off one and a half handles out there two months out, just doing size ninety five thousand in the front month contract out there for the futures. So it's just uh, it's just crazy town. Of course, we got some actual earnings after the bell. How fun is that to say? Uh, which is uh, which is interesting, and we're looking forward to sinking our teeth into that. Netflix, I think you guys may have heard of it. You guys tend to like to trade it, so we'll get into that in a little bit. But first, Mr. Rock Lobster, you're back, so let's celebrate it by letting you go first. And also, uh, just uh, what the heck? Today was quite the day, huh? Um, it was. It's it's one of those days where, I, and I could not find any good news. I just found a lack of bad news. Is that enough for, um, is that enough for, um, um, <laughs> is that enough for us to rally this much? So I, I'm, I, I've just, if history shows anything, this will be our, um, this will be our, uh, I'm sure a tweet will come out. And we'll be smacked down tomorrow. I was going to say, there that's was no, the there only. was no tweet today. That's what, that's what the rally was. Hey, no crazy tweet of trade war or actual war or any, or any sort of, uh, FBI beef. So let's, let's rally. I, I think, so. you know, we're still 200 points below the all time high. I, th I believe. Um, so that's what 10%. So there's plenty of upside room. Um, if things aren't awful, and I think that's what where everybody's trying to at least, you know, people that are what divining the uh, divining the runes coming out of <laughs> the Twitter feed now. Um, so the market, and I think the market wants to rally on good earnings. So um, that would be that's that's would be that's what I would say. Um, that's what I would say with what we've got now. Um, we're looking for earnings. We want good earnings. And if the market gets the good, I mean, we got decent bank earnings already. So, you know, you would think that uh, now we're looking for technology and we'll actually see how that goes. So I think this is a, we'll just call this a pre-rally. Um, and they did take volatility down pretty good, but it should, you know, again, we got another 1% move up and now VIX is drifting to around the 16 handle. So, you know, we had, I talked about this last week where, 
you know, maybe some of the volatility was slowing down a little bit, and it appears to be the case now. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, I like the notion that it's just a, a no Trump tweet, <laughs> no tweet day rally. Because, uh, hey, no one's talking war war or trade war or anything along those lines. So let's let's just rally. It's, it's Everyone's in good mood. Everyone's excited. People are posting uh, articles out there. I think Bloomberg had a big write-up about how, hey, everyone's excited to get some vol back off the boards again. Because uh, we talked about it before when we had the ORATS guys on talking about some of their earnings data that just in general, uh, you know, earnings season tends to squeeze vol a little bit. Uh, we see all this focus on the micro. The macro tends to... To drift lower a little bit. You also see the market tends to rally during earnings season, so that also puts a little bit of downward pressure on volatility. So uh, the market's uh, looking forward to that. At least a lot of people out there in the uh, in the short vol space. Of course, not from not from the old COT report coming out of the VIX futures. They got a record net long of nearly ninety three thousand contracts. Again, this is a lagging indicator, listeners. So this is last week from April tenth, but still people are loading up, which is, again. VIX was a wee bit higher when they were loading up on those futures, so they're perhaps wearing that today. But of course, those are usually a hedge, so they probably got a little bit of a little bit of a smile on their face elsewhere. Uh, but still, uh, interesting stuff lurking out there as everyone seems to be ready for a little bit of. Re Last year it was can't why can't we get more vol, and this year it's like why can't this vol go away, uh, get go away fast enough, Mister Rock Lobster? Nobody's happy. And you know what's funny is now they got the vol is lower. I just. Um is I wonder if they kind of I guess the thing about you know trying to short volatility is you have to wait till it stops going up or you have to make sure you have enough money so you can ride it when it's on its way down so um it looks like we're starting to get into that phase and uh you know and what do we have my uh we are in zone two now so it's been a while since we've actually been in uh uh in that zone um and we're starting to have what I would say is almost, almost a normal, uh, almost a normal future curve. So, you know, we we get more good earnings, and I think, you know, again, I think we need a lack of tweets, but um, that just kind of, I think the the you you should see like the vol slowly come out a little bit, and then um, uh, and the market keeps rallying. But I mostly look at. Um, 14 is probably sort of the short-term bottom for volatility. It doesn't mean it can't go through there, but that's kind of where it was. And it actually, we saw, I think, that's sort of where it was before all this uh, happened. So whatever happened <laughs> that drove stocks down so much, and I'm still trying to put my finger on it because um, if you think about it, and Tucson could maybe speak to this, <laughs> but I haven't seen a lot of fundamental changes for the volatility we've had in the market. Uh it almost sounded like volatility just needed to have a party, and it decided to pick February and March to have that party. But maybe Tusa has some other ideas about that. And Uncle Mike, as our bull of bulls here on the show, A, uh, you probably have a big smile on your face as the bull is back, at least for today. And then B, uh, what do you think about Mr. Rock Lobster is talking about here? What, what do you think is, is driving all this madness, sir? Well, I think what originally drove this, what it came back to as a starting point, not uh, what drove it, but just as something that maybe would have been like uh, the equivalent of someone throwing out their lit cigarette into a forest where there hasn't been any rain for three months, uh, could have been um, just the volatility product uh, that we had in early February, uh, XIV, uh, doing what it did when we had that rally that day in volatility and just causing all sorts of chaos. Uh, now, did the volatility product do what it was supposed to do? Yeah, it did. Uh, no doubt about that. But what I think a lot of things were revolved around or involved with that uh, was that that was just kind of a, a small little catalyst to what caused this chaos in the first place. Uh, the other thing, even before that, that I think caused that the chaos in the first place is a seven and a half, seven and a half percent rally in January uh, in stocks. Uh, when you get a seven and a half percent rally in one month, let's annualize that for a second. Uh, seven and a half times 12. Uh, what does that come out to? That comes out to over an 80 percent year for the S&P 500. It's obviously not going to be sustainable. Uh, I've been around a while. I've never seen an 80 percent year for the uh, a year over 80 percent for the S&P 500. Uh, and so when you have something like that, you're going to at least have some type of a pullback. 
Now, when you have that much that much uh, euphoria as we had in January, I've never seen any time in my entire career where euphoria has not been followed by at least somewhat of a pullback. So we have the recipe to where we have euphoria in January. Hey, it's January. Let's put some money in the market, honey. Uh, you have uh, reason to buy a lot of volatility because volatility was so low. Uh, then come February, uh, I think that we peaked out on January 26, but then come February, uh, we have the XIV thing. Uh, we have a pullback in the market. Uh, a reason to pull back in the market because we were at all-time highs. Uh, we have a lot of other things that were happening. We have um, uh, the Facebook ordeal. Uh, we had a lot of other headline risk that existed that started uh, through February and into March. And when you have all those things, the markets are going to pull back and volatility is likely going to go up. Uh, so I think with all of the things that we have had happen in, Janu in uh, February and March, Combined with the fact that we're just coming off of all-time highs, it makes sense looking back on it. Now, does that mean that we're not going to go above uh, the all-time highs from January in the next few months? No, I actually think we will, but I'm a shameless bull. I'm the first to always admit that. Uh, but in looking at everything, this isn't really that crazy, all things considered. So uh, if we have just another two or three months like January, then we're going to have a phenomenal year for the Bulls in 2018. Uh, if we continue to stay where we are, we're still going to be ahead on the year. The markets are ahead on the year again as of the close of today. So I think with everything involved, uh, I don't really see a lot of fundamental changes. Uh, to, to, go, to answer Andrew's question on that, I don't see a lot of fundamental changes in the market now as compared to the beginning of the year. Now, here's what I could see as a, a big change in the marketplace uh, coming out with earnings. This is going to be, these are Q1 earnings that are coming out, and this is going to be the first quarter where we've had the tax cut factored into earnings. Now, the tax cut happened late in 2017, and I think a lot of the euphoria that happened in January of 2018 had to do with the tax cut. But now what we are actually going to see over the course of the next few weeks in earnings season is did the tax cut really affect the earnings? And if it did, earnings will be higher or better. Uh, and that, I think, will be a positive for the marketplace. Now, my concern going into the year, and I remember talking with clients doing annual reviews in January, I figure, and this is during the euphoria, I thought, okay, well, my thought is that we might stay high or continue to go higher. And then if we're going to have a pullback, I figured we'd have it around now because of the fact that we were going to be higher uh, because of the anticipation of the better earnings. Then when earnings comes out, it'd just be kind of like a sell the news type of a pullback. Uh, but the markets obviously did not behave that way. So I think we're in for a pretty exciting time over the next couple of weeks to actually see and get a gauge of how these tax cuts are actually going to affect uh, real stocks in the real world. Speaking of real stocks in the real world, sir, let's turn our attention now to that real world known as earnings season. How nice is it to say that again? How nice is it to have that back on the docket? You know, macro has its place, has its purpose. The old viceroy used to love the talks of macro. Uh, but, you know, it's been so much macro of late <coughs> and a lot of it conflicting and conflating uh, that it's nice to just sink our teeth into some relatively discreet micro events known as earnings and kicking things off with a bang this season good old netflix aka the Widowmaker ticker symbol you guys know it nflx uh, closing out the day right around right close to 308 307 78 a uh, little bit rally home mode it was shy of 307 going into the close and ended up about a point higher there so a little bit of love even though it was off net on the day nearly four handles are a little over one percent and those doing from pretty decent paper today, as you might imagine, going into earnings. This is the name that does decent paper on a given day, about 175,000 contracts. Today, doing about 261,000 pretty even calls to puts, about 1.2 to 1 uh, calls over puts, which is kind of interesting. Usually, you see maybe a little bit more bias than that going into an earnings number like this. But today, uh, not so much in terms of what the market was looking for out here. They were pricing in... Uh, pretty decent, pretty hefty, a little bit shy of 30 bucks, about 28 bucks straddle. Works out to a little bit around 9%. 
uh, based on where they were looking. And uh, so far today, it looks like uh, they initially had a good bounce. They were up about 21, 22 handles in the after hours. It's like they're giving a little bit of that up now, only up a mere 18 and a half handles. They're at around 6%. Uh, in the after hours. So interesting stuff out there. Worthy of note, too, looking at the paper out there today, courtesy of our friends over there in the land of alerting of trades, a.k.a. Trade Alert. Uh, they're the, showing the biggest trade out there today. Uh, where it was actually pretty pretty small. Only 1,200 lot was the biggest trade out there in Netflix, which is kind of interesting. Uh, doing the ape 37 halves, uh, expiring on the 27th. Uh, so these are, are the weeklies going up for 87 cents. Looks like opening... And indeed, uh, this is, uh, so that's 375 listeners. Uh, so that's, can you, I think you can say that's some pretty, shall we say, aggressively bullish paper out there in, uh, in the old Widowmaker. Mr. Rock Lobster, I know you got some hardcores, shall we say, some crazies there in the pit chat. Any of them slinging themselves some Netflix today? Uh, as far as I as far as I could tell, we're looking to sling Netflix tomorrow after the earnings. There wasn't a lot. Uh, pre-earnings today. I have to be honest. I have to be honest. So I wish I could, I would have some color, but um, I think probably the best chance to sell the juice is after the earnings. What fun are you, sir? Just, just bursting all of our bubbles. No 5,000 uh, watt, you know, iron fly swaps going on in the old pit chat today. Uh, there, there wasn't in Netflix, but I, I do have uh, some interesting trade in VIX when we do get to that, you know, the, uh, the Fedora portion of the show the fedora hat wearing portion of the show what i wish i had more for you in netflix but I, it always is a little more fun of a trade after earnings I that's think. true we always do talk post earnings here but it is interesting to see uh, somebody certainly is feeling the ghost feeling the love out there in the old widow maker 375 by the 27th of april listeners so a scant 11 days from now uh they think netflix is going to be off to the races it does kind of raise the question at this point Maybe a good question. Maybe we should put this out. Maybe this should be an, an ancillary question of the week. At the time, coming into today, Tesla and Netflix are right around the same level, right around 300. Uh, maybe an interesting question. Which would you rather have at 300, Tesla or Netflix? Uh, looking looking how the how the how the former and the latter have been doing of late, maybe you want to go Widowmaker. They seem to be actually growing their numbers of late and not talking bankruptcy. But say la vie. Who am I to color the results? Maybe that'll be a fun poll for later on in the week. We'll put some fun options terminology on there. Want to buy a call in Netflix or uh, or good old good old Widowmaker or good old Tesla, I should say. Speaking of Tesla, and you mentioned the odd block. Let's get to it. We'll keep an eye on Netflix throughout the show, listeners, and we'll uh, we'll come back if anything interesting develops. Uh, probably talk more about it later in the week because that's when that's when the crazes in the pit chat like to sling it after the earnings. Uh, but let's get on to it. What was lighting up our tape today? Let's get into the odd block. It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by TheOptionsInsider.com. It's time for The Odd Block. Everybody, welcome to the Odd Block, the portion of the show where we break down the weird, the wild, the wondrous options paper that was catching our eye today. I mentioned before Tesla and the Widowmaker on the same level. After today, that may not be the case. Tesla is selling off nine handles today, or about 3%, so about 291, whereas it looks like Netflix catching a bid here in the after hours. So uh, maybe we missed our chance for when those two ships would pass in the night. But say la vie, let's get to Tesla, because we always like kicking off our Odd Block uh, with our friends, the mystery tesla puts perhaps not so much of a mystery anymore i think we, perhaps we have divined what the what is going on behind these bad boys even though they still do a lot of paper and still is a lot of still get a lot of interesting suggestions as to what people think is up on this strike of course we're talking about the much ballyhooed jan 2019 50 puts still uh still number one out there with the bullet in terms of Tesla open interest positions, pushing 50,000 out there now on the strike. Uh, they are about around, trading right around a buck 50 right now. Another 500 and change, about 560 hitting the tape today. So we'll be breaking 50,000 pretty much any day at this point. Also worth noting, the PAR is lighting it up today too. Nearly 1,000 going up there. Uh, so we're a total of about 23,000 open interest or very close to it on that strike as well. So these mystery far out of the money puts Continue to trade even all the way out to Jan 2020. Yes, a year beyond that. 
uh, where the uh, Jan 2020 50 puts doing only 51 today, which is 11,000 11, open interest out there. So pretty sizable OI for a contract that uh, hasn't been around too long. Also worth noting, nearly 200 of the Jan 2020 20 puts going up today. In fact, the whole strip, a 10-lot strip, pretty much all the way down, 45 puts, 40, 30, 25. So people are discovering these crazy, crazy out-of-the-money puts in Jan 2020, which, by the way, if you want to buy a Jan 2020 20, 25 put, it's going to cost you nearly two bucks. Uh, so there you go, <laughs> two bucks for a $25 put. <coughs> Interesting how, uh, how these bad boys move. Also worth knowing the pars in Jan 2020, uh, lighting it up to the tune of about 130. So nearly 8,000 open on that strike as well. So all these kind of funky catastrophe put strikes in Tesla. Getting a lot of love, getting a lot of juice, certainly getting a lot of attention of late. Uh, they certainly have been moving quite a bit. Uh, in terms of value, about a 2x move and back again for those Jan 2019 50 puts. Either way, though, uh, they continue to light it up as Tesla continues to come under pressure. The bears are out there with the claws. Uh, we shall see how, how this continues. Speaking of the bears, Mr. Rock Lobster, the bears tend to, the VIX tends to like some bears. Not so much today when the, when the bears were out for VIX itself. But you mentioned you saw some interesting uh, options activity in the VIX land, sir. What came across your own personal tape? Well, my own personal tape, get a load of this, right? So if this is probably the most aggressive trade I've seen. So they were buying the VIX April 8th, expiring the 18th. This was just a couple of days. They're buying the 16 puts. They traded over 140,000 of them. That's quite a – and they also traded over 150,000 of the April 17 calls. So um, somebody is looking for – it's either a closing strangle action, but it's still, it looks like we had, we had more uh, volume on the puts and it's just a ton of volume on the call. So, so I think it's definitely, somebody you think, is you think it's a strangle, closing. not a risk reversal. It's definitely a strangle. I, I, I'm, I think, I think, cause it looked like the puts were definitely buyers. Um, so that was the, that was the lion's share that we saw. And I just want to make sure, but yes, just, they're just paying 25 cents or more for uh, puts 26 cents. Pretty, pretty good chunks of puts. Um, so it, it, it appears to me that they kept buying them, but, um, but by the end of the day, uh, they were a lot higher than where they started the day on. So It's interesting because you can get all the 15 puts you want for a nickel. <laughs> there's like well, 40,000 I mean, <laughs> 40, offered there. Uh, right. But still, I, I get why they would want the 16, but still, that's the year right, 142,000. Uh, going up, uh, looks like also a lot. Seventeen calls that would also you mentioned in there too. Yep, and a bunch of the seventeen calls went up as well. So it's um, I, again very the one hundred and fifty thousand of those that look like buying as well. Um, so a and but again, I'm not sure again on the on the call side, um, but I, I think it was buying. So they, I, it was either a massive amount of closing. Uh, maybe they just, you know, so let's say somebody sold that strangle a long time ago um, and they just had a shot to buy it all back. So um, I don't know. I, it's it, it feels it is feeling more shortish paper to me. Um, but that's again, that's it's that is the inkling I get on this particular one. They're really trying to jam the 16 strike. So, I mean, if you get a sub-16 close tomorrow for VIX, you know, you could get one of those crazy prints lower. So it is possible. Size VIX collar, shall we say, <laughs> out there. That's a pretty tight one, if that is indeed the kit. They were indeed selling those calls. Uh, 16 handle, 7. It would be funny if they had sold that strangle and they're just scrambling to get it back now because <laughs> it all came back. <laughs> They'd well, just they been did, sweating. They made money for sure. I mean, because, I mean, a bunch of the calls traded through the offer. Um, so it, was, it had... But it, it's hard. The paper was sort of everywhere, um, and so we'll we'll see what that what's going on with that. So I'm I'm just waiting for that whale guy to show up again and do his a uh, bazillion contracts. Yeah, but Vix I has been kind of quiet with yacht him. with the other money, so I guess he doesn't really need to do much now. He was sweating for a little bit too, but then he did all right. This guy, if he was if he sold that strangle, he was sweating a bit. Uh, maybe got a few taps by the risk manager over the last week or two, uh, but now it's back. He's like, look, see, I told you, come back to my one handle range. 
<laughs> I clearly knew better than the market on that one. Uh, but yeah, that's that's some size paper. That's worth keeping an eye on out there. You know, VIX is always challenging to do UA on because it's anything you look at, even a 300,000 contract trade, it's kind of like spitting into the wind. There's so much paper out there. It does a million contracts a day. So sometimes it's hard to parse. Luckily, this one, this size, it makes it a little bit easier. But even still, the executions are so good. Everything's mid-market. The vol is moving so much out there. It's kind of hard to always intuit exactly what was going on. But if that, if that is uh, indeed how you prognosticated it, sir, then that is it's interesting either way. Just, just, the, just the size of what's going on there. Uh, that's certainly one to keep an eye on as we go on. Got a couple, couple days for those to go out. So let's hope for his sake that he's closing and he's sitting on a nice pile of money. Because if he's opening on those 16s, I don't know, he needs, uh, he needs some action, and he needs it now. The puts, of course, I'm referring to. Uh, let's go on to speaking of someone else who, and something that's delivering action, at least in terms of options. Our old friend Yandex, just back, just back in the mix, baby. Yandex NV, ticker symbol YNDX, closing today, 33.63, up about 2% on the day. We've talked about this one a lot lately. Uh, it's kind of been just on our UA a lot. Uh, if you remember last week, we talked on the ninth, so exactly a week ago, about size, looks like rolling down from the 40s to the 36 calls in May. It went up 5,000 times, but actually, total on the day, those 36s did a lot of volume. They did 22,000 on the ninth. They did 10,000 more on the 10th. Uh, so calls have been have been kind of the order of the day in, excuse me, in Yandex. And today, surprise, surprise, seeing a little bit more action out here in good old Yandex. By the way, this is the name, in case you missed it last week, does about 10,000 contracts a day. Today, doing about 80,000. So that UA is creeping up there as we keep doing these big spikes of paper. And what we saw today looked like maybe a little bit of uh, trending into a bit of a, uh, a strangle or maybe closing out some of the size calls uh, to put some puts on. We saw the May 30, 36, uh, call it a strangle. Risk reversal, if you like, if they are closing and dealing the calls going up. Looks like paper, uh, actually both these trades going up below the bins, maybe, maybe below the bids, maybe a bit of an out of sequence pits up, uh, excuse me, out of, out of sequence print. Uh, 3,500 times, looks like paper crushing the bid for 90 cents on the calls and for a buck on the puts. So if it is a strangle, doing the whole thing for a wee bit shy of two bucks there. 3,500 times as the day went on, a total of 5,000 on the puts and 6,000 on the calls, all opening on the puts. Uh, whereas the calls, uh, there is about, I guess I mentioned, still about 17,000 contracts opening. Uh, so they could be taking some of those off. If they are indeed taking them off after having uh, bought them, then perhaps uh, not looking so good. Those are trading, oh, about $2.22 when we profiled them last week here on the show. So a big change from 222 down to 90 just in the span of a week. So perhaps they're wearing a little bit on those, which is perhaps why that OI uh, continues continues uh, to go there. Of course, that print is, that's a pretty aggressive print. I'm looking at these calls still went out at, they went out at buck 30 to buck 40. So that 90 cent print, uh, that's pretty aggressive. They were definitely below the bid on those. I guess they really, really wanted to get that done. Let's check once again on our old friend Yandex, what it's been up to. It's been kind of an interesting year. Tra opened the year about 23 bucks and then proceeded to hit a high of about 43 I hit that level as recently as back, actually hit 44 back on the 8th, so a little more than a month ago, and then kind of has been drifting down pretty much ever since, right around to where it is right now, 33 bucks. Uh, still, this 36 strike, Mr. Rock Lobster, it, uh, it doesn't want to quit. Also saw AUG 35s, I should mention, too, also uh, very active. 35, 36 calls in Yandex are just the place to be. The AUG 35s doing eight, nearly 9,000 contracts today uh, for $2.78. Those are on the offer, uh, all opening there as well. So, funky, just all this continued call action in Yandex, Mr. Uh, Mr. Rock Lobster. Uh, what, what, what is your spidey sense telling you about this continued call action? Well, I look at this and I'm the May, a lot of the May options today, it looks like they kind of sold them through the bid. Does that make sense? Yeah, um, they went up way through the bid. <laughs> yeah. So you're, I mean, that's, it feels like a pretty aggressive vol sale into earnings. I, it, I think they have a late April earnings. So I find it, I find that one an interesting one. Um, also, a lot of action in August, um, and I it might those might be spreads. So I I'm not quite sure if 
the uh, the way I'm looking at it, are they using this? Are, is someone using the strangle to pay for their August 35 calls? I think that's possible. Um, um, I I because there's there's two different trades. You got 3,500 contracts there. You got around 5,000 of the August. I mean, it's possible they're using that as a as those that it's possible they're using those um, options as a hedge because they all traded on one exchange. So the um, the August traded uh, prior to the May. So it has that feeling of that. So I I think another thing with this is, you know, the Yandex is suffering because the ruble is suffering. Um, and somebody might be looking for a bounce. It's like, okay, there's, you know, there's all that sort of negative Russian stuff coming out. And then all of a sudden, you know, there's a couple of tweets later and maybe it's all not so bad in the, in the ruble rally. So I feel like somebody is positioning for that, but in the short term, they're not looking for a lot out of it, but potentially down the road, kind of a little bit of a, a little bit of a kick. Yeah, I like the financing angle because then they're taking off nearly two bucks of the uh, about two seventy five they paid for those odd calls. Of course, again, that's a that strangle has its own risks to it, but still, maybe and they they sold that for. I mean, they really crushed that bid to get that off, and they probably could have got a better price, at least on the calls. Uh, but still, uh, interesting to see. And yeah, that could be an interesting finance angle. Either way, I think this is not the last time we're going to be talking about Yandex anytime soon. It comes up on all of our scans just about every day these days. So uh, it's it's certainly not the last time. We'll keep an eye on those bad boys as well as we continue to see what the what the heck is going on out there in good old Yandex calls. Let's let's move on to a little bit more of a straightforward one. A little bit easier to sink our teeth into a bit of a palate cleanser after the continued madness that is Yandex, Mr. Rocklops. Let's move on to Devon Energy Corp, ticker symbol DVN, closing today, 3362, pretty much unched on the day. It's a name that does about 10,000 contracts a day. Today, doing nearly 2x that, about 18,000. Eight and a half to one calls over puts. So that is where our eye of Sauron was drawn today, and it was to the May 37s. Doing a big block of nearly 8,000 earlier this morning for about 52 cents, right on the offer there, just gobbling those bad boys up. A total of nearly 11,000 hitting the tape on the day. That's about 10x the OI on that strike, so clearly opening. Uh, they went out 53 at 55, so they actually got a good price on that early uh, early block. They bid that strike up a wee bit, shall we say. Not surprising, uh, given the fact that they're pretty much most of the paper of the day. Uh, so interesting stuff out there, worth noting. Uh, the earnings are the first, so this could be a straight-up earnings play on here because, uh, obviously, the May contract going to have some earnings juice going on. And let's look back at the year that's been. It's kind of been a topsy-turvy roller coaster year. It's like a bit of a roller coaster path here. Starts off the year right around 41 bucks, gets down to, oh, looks like about 28 and change back in July of last year, kind of bounces around there for a while, then kind of shoots back up and bounces around, gets all the way back up to 45 uh, by the end of January, then we all know what happened in February. Everything got crushed, including uh, including DVN, and they sold back off to pretty much where they are now, in the low 30s again. So, Mr. Rock Lobster, sounds like, at least on the surface, someone's coming out and saying, you know what, I like myself some upside. I like myself Devon's chance here to uh, to do some rally home going through earnings and blow back up to those earlier levels. What say you, sir, about some straight-up upside call love in DVN? Uh, I like this. This is my closet pick for, uh, 2018, all the oil, oil services, oil producers, all that stuff, um, kind of digging themselves out of the, uh, morass. That was what, 2014, I think for the oil stocks or 2015. So I'm, I have to say, you look at that and that, that is a, I would call even for me that I think that's a little, let's see here. Is that how aggressive is that for Devin? I'm just taking a look here at the wall. Um, you know, I, it looks like purchase. Um, that's, that would be a little aggressive <laughs> for me. Buying out of the money calls is not my yeah, favorite. It's got to rally to 10% through earnings pretty much. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I do own some out of the money calls, but they didn't start as out of the money calls in some of the oil producers. So, um, I, I understand what they're doing, but that to me, but the time frame is much longer. This is a pretty, I would say this is an aggressive time frame, but you know, I think they're looking at those year highs and they, and uh, for the stock and they think, okay, maybe, uh, maybe it's, we're, we're coming back to that. So I don't know how much Devon, uh, produces natural gas too, because natural gas is still on the floor. So, um, but either way, 
that that would be aggressive for me in this stock. Uh, I, <laughs> it's, that would be too aggressive for me at this point, I have to say, even though uh, I like the group as a whole to start kind of, uh, I think, you know, very much possible outperforming from here on out for the year. But um, that that's a little aggressive. So if I'm reading between the lines here correctly, you're saying that that 10,000 block was you. That's what you're saying. <laughs> you know what? If I uh, if I just if I had a couple of extra bucks, I I would think about, but not the thirty sevens. That that's I don't the, know if I could I could buy. The <laughs> that's a bridge too far. Thirty three, you, you're thinking, but thirty seven, you know, that's the new mo of Carmen Line, slinging all that upside in uh, in oil producers and refiners. There we go, volatility and energy fund. All right, let's move on to our final name, everyone's favorites, uh, Pags Seguro. Digital Limited, ticker symbol PAGS, P-A-G-S, closing today, 34 and a half. I do believe they're making their odd block debut. Given their volume, it probably would make sense. They do about 98 contracts a day. Today doing 56, almost 5,700, about 21 to 1, puts over calls. You pull up an options chart, an options chain of these guys, listeners, you'll see what I'm talking about right away. They don't do any paper except for today when they did 5,401 of the May 30 puts. Someone drawn, looks like a pretty sizable line in the sand uh, to the tune of about 5,400. Like I said, all these going up for 20 cents, which was pretty much right around, uh, well, the market was ridiculous. It was, it was a dime at buck 55. So <laughs> I think you can call it bid side on that one. Looks like someone, I said, blasting out quite a few of, uh, of these for 20 cents. Uh, perhaps drawing, shall we say, an aggressive line in the sand. The stock is right around 34 and a half. And let's look back at a chart here, because, again, this is our, their first time on the show. And they, had, they don't even have that much of a history here. They're only going back, uh, only going back to January of this year. So this is a uh, new entry in many, in many senses of the word. Uh, let's see. Going back to January, beginning of the year here, where they were trading right around 28 and change. Actually, about 28 That's where they kicked off the year. And they rallied as high as about 40, pretty close to it, 39 and change. And they're kind of drifting back down to the middle of the upper middle of that range again, right around 35, 34 and a half, where they close today. Mr. Rock Lobster, what do you think is up with these puts? Because this, you know, these markets are funky. They're like a buck wide because nobody trades this thing. Uh, they put up 20 cents. I'm, I'm, I'm not thinking this guy bought these puts for 20 cents. That'd be pretty impressive if he did indeed do that. Looks like someone sold them, which case someone drawn a pretty interesting line in the sand here. Are you on board with that here for everyone's favorite Pag Seguro Digital Limited? <laughs> I, I like don't I I'm not gonna even say it's bold. I think it's very bold. That's I don't even know what this company does, um, but I I have to say that's a bit of a stroke of boldness. Somebody's just jumping in. They're jumping in and saying, uh, thirty is it? Thirty's my line, and nothing's gonna nothing's gonna change that. So, I uh, the only thing I could say is, oh my, uh, oh my. Um, so that is the line in the sand. We'll see. Uh, I, now I have to go see what this stock does because, but <laughs> the options are untradeable. But at least, uh, yes, they're a <laughs> wee bit you wide. Sell, you know what? This is uh, my one of my favorite things about trading options are the options are untradeable until you can find a ridiculous price to trade them. So, you know, and this is so classic. It looks like the, what are they? They traded they for the five thousand marked um, twenty cents. Twenty cents, right? and they, they came out thirty they bucks. Out 30, thirty cents. Bid. They come out thirty bid <laughs> in his face. I I, I I did a double take at that to make sure I was looking at there. I felt so bad for that guy. I was like, that's terrible. They marked him in his face the second he got. Him. <laughs> you gotta have a little chat with your broker. You gotta be like, at least come on, make me good up to thirty. Come on, make me good up to there. Come on, do something for me. You just you just took me to the cleaners. Uh, <laughs> wow! That was a that was a veritable slap in the face. Um, how are they now? How do you want it? So, and again, uh, I remember fondly those days. But um, and it looks like a put that you know it. This was a stock that was kind of just hanging around thirty, and then was off to the races. So, um, I mean, it, I can understand that they want um, they want to own that thirty strike, but you know, God. Gosh, day number one, and you're already just getting slapped. <laughs> so, I mean, there's more. There is now more open interest on that strike than there is on all the others. All the other strikes by multiple, multiple, uh, by a factor of many. Some, so. Someone, someone's going to come after listening to this show. They're going to buy a ten lot for like a, get filled to like a buck. 
And in the span of a day, they'll have printed from 20 cents to a buck, be an 80 cent swing on this one nonsense strike. And that will, uh, that will show you sometimes the illusion of liquidity that lurks in some of these less liquid names out there in the options. All right, speaking of some illusions, Uncle Mike's ready to bust some of your illusions in the options world because it is time for a special Monday edition of the Strategy Block. It's time to dispense options, wit, wisdom, and education. It's time for The Strategy Block. All right, Uncle Mike, easy for me to get the name of your segment right, but it's understandable why I'm mixed up, because we're mixing things up a little bit today. Usually you do The Strategy Block on Thursday. Today, we're moving it to Monday. It works better for Uncle Mike's schedule. It's a fun way to kick off the week with some strategy. Uncle Mike, my birds, they've been chirping in my ear the whole time I'm trying to talk odd block. I, I had to shoo them away, but I, they were chirping something about crazy, funky synthetics and, and time. And they kept grabbing like, a, like my calendar my wall and throwing it in my face. So I'm going to guess something about calendars and synthetics. Are my birds correct, sir? Uh, your birds, as always, are correct. You need to give them more bird seed, I think, because they're doing a great job. I think they earned it today. I, I would I would agree. I would agree. So today I want to go through uh, synthetics just uh, just briefly. I know we have uh, don't have a ton of time left before we get into the mail block uh, before the end of the show today. Uh, uh, but I, I want to go through. Through it, what it means and how it can be affected and synthetic than a lot of people think may exist. Uh, so with that being said, first off, let's just go through a basic synthetic, the classic one that everybody always talks about when uh, going through synthetics, and that is covered call versus short put. Now, let's say that there's no dividend on the stock. And if there's no dividend on the stock and you sell an at-the-money covered call, meaning you buy the stock for 20 bucks, you sell the 20 call for, oh, let's say 50 cents. Uh, your risk, of course, is the $20 for losing the stock. And you get to keep that 50 cents because uh, the call expires worthless. Uh, if the stock were to, so your risk would be $19 and 50 cents. Should the stock close above 20, your gain would be 50 cents. So in this case, you'd be risking $19.50 for the potential to gain 50 cents. Now, let's say that you sold the 20 put. If all things are equal and everything is working as it should in the option world, that 20 put should be trading for roughly uh, 50 cents as well. Now, of course, it could be a little bit higher, could be a little bit lower depending on demand and things like that and supply and things like that. Uh, but with that being said, uh, Theoretically, the 20 put should also be priced exactly at 50 cents. Now, it might be also a little bit higher if you have some interest rate risks or some or some interest rate in age, even though we have had interest rate increases, uh, we have not had many. So being said, selling the put, the cash secured put should be with you factor in everything to put call on the stock with which you own. Oh, hold on, Uncle Mike. It seems like uh, seems like the uh, seems like the connection out there. The one man using the internet in St. Charles is uh, is bumping up against you here on the old show. Let's see, listeners, if we can uh, magically bring Uncle Mike back on with a little bit. Are you there, sir? Are the magic of internet is it working for you again, sir? How is this sounding? Sounds good. It sounded good before, and he started breaking up again. So let's hope the uh, the gods of of St. Charles internet smile upon you, sir. Okay, got it, got it, got it. So let's say that uh, you, you you would get a fifty cent gain because you get to keep the premium on the short put, and you'd also have a nineteen dollar and fifty cent loss uh, if the stock were to go to zero because that fifty cents is yours to keep no matter what. However, you're obligated to buy the stock at twenty, even if the stock is at zero, and if the stock closes above twenty and the put expires worthless, you have that fifty cents with no further obligations. Now, that's a very simple synthetic, uh, and synthetic just means that it's a, a synthetic strategy. It's the same thing. What I want to talk about today is another synthetic that not a lot of people look at, and I think in markets, if you trade these strategies, it's something with which to consider when you're doing it, and that is a calendar spread. So a calendar spread is when you buy an option, let's say maybe three or four months out, and then you sell an option at the same strike price at a more near-term expiration. Now, the purpose of that strategy is that you're 
and belief that the uh, whether it's volatility, time decay, uh, whatever the case may be, you believe that the long option is going to increase at a rate faster than the short option will decrease whether it's through implied volatility chain skews, whether it's through uh, time decay being linear, whether you think, well, the stock won't quite get to this price. And let's say you're doing it above where the uh, current stock price is. You think, well, the stock won't get to this price by expiration. That near term will expire and then I'll have the long term free and clear. Uh, it can be for a variety of reasons as to why you want to do it. Uh, but what I would recommend taking a look at is how calendar spreads can be synthetic. Let's say, for example, that XYZ stock is trading at 20 again, and you're really bullish on XYZ stock. So you wanna do a bullish calendar spread, a bullish call calendar spread out of the money. You look at the 22 calendar spread. Now, let's say that the, uh, in this case, the October 22 call is trading at $4, and the June 22 call is trading at $2, let's say, and you buy that calendar spread for $2. Well, here's a conundrum. Let's say that you're doing the same thing with the same strike prices, but you're using puts. Well, you're able to buy that same spread for, say, $1.80. Well, you may want to consider buying it for $1.80. Now, why would that be, you may ask? Well, here's why. It is a synthetic trade. If you look at the risk reward to that trade, it is the exact same thing. Now, with that being said, most of the time, the calendar spreads, when you're looking at them, are going to be probably within a nickel of each other. So it's usually not a huge deal. However, it does happen at times to where in calendar spreads, you could get a better deal going with puts instead of calls or vice versa. I would recommend everyone add this to their toolbox for something to look at. Uh, oftentimes, if you're looking, let's say you're a out of the money vertical puts spread seller, it does make sense to possibly look at the same strike prices with an in the money vertical call or a vertical uh, call debit spread and buy it. And your risk reward is the same thing. Uh, and you might even get a better fill by a dime or 15 cents. Whatever the case may be, have an awareness and an understanding as to how the spread works, what you're looking to do and when it might make sense to do something with, within a synthetic. And that is the strategy block for today on a Monday, Tax Day 2018. There you go. Well done, Uncle Mike. Glad to see the uh, Skype gods are smiling upon you once again as we roll on into our final segment. It is time for Around the Block. It's time to tell you what we'll be watching on our trading screens until the next episode. It's time for Around the Block. All right, let's check back in first off on our old friend, the widow maker. Not making too many widows today, making a lot of uh, happy, happy ladies and everybody else out there uh, today. Uh, up about 20 handles right now in the after hours, a little over 6%. Uh, they're pricing in a bit more than that. They're pricing in right around 9%, so a little bit shy of what the straddle is pricing. But still, uh, overall, uh, looks like the market still like it, what Netflix is uh, selling out there. Speaking of uh, earnings, there's a whole bunch coming, including this week. You got old school tech, good old Beamer popping off uh, before the bell, actually after the bell uh, tomorrow. Goldman before the open uh, tomorrow. Then we've got just a bunch of other names. Amex, uh, good old Pier 1 popping off on Wednesday. Morgan Stanley before the bell on Wednesday as well. Uh, E-Trade after the bell on Thursday. we got uh, P, a bunch of names out there. Uh, Nucor, Blackstone on Thursday as, uh, as well. And Friday, looks like uh, a few other names out there. Honeywell, P&G, and others. GE. So a lot of big names start sinking your teeth into, of course, a couple of weeks after that, we start getting all the names. We got Netflix this week. We get some more big consumer tech names you guys like to sling. And it'll be off to the races, which will be quite fun. That said, Mr. Rock Lobster, we'll start with you. In addition to the slew of earnings out there, what, what are you watching this week, sir? Um, mostly I'm watching, let's see if we can see new lows in Vol. Um, and, and I'm watching oil, the oil stocks and the Russian thing, just because it, it's one of those stories that has kind of bouncy capability. So um, those are kind of the big things I'm looking at, um, at just for things that can move. And, you know, that's that's basically what I'm looking for. So my eye is still on that stuff. 
uh, and I think just tech earnings will should push fall lower if they're good. Um, that's the only thing I can think of at this point. Yeah, that would be nice to squeeze a little bit of vol south again. Mr. Uncle Mike, if you've saved your breath up from all that uh, calendar spread synthetics, sir, what you, what you watching the rest of the week? Well, I think Syria is what the other thing with which we need to watch. Uh, we did launch some missile, missiles at Syria and uh, wanting to see where that actually goes. Uh, also looking to see uh, where we can go if we can stay out of the range with which we just broke out of today on the S&P 500, in addition to everything that Andrew had mentioned and, uh, of course, earnings. Of course, indeed. Syria, why, why would a war war move the market, sir? It's madness, the things you speak. All right, that music means we've come to the end of another epic journey through the world of options, kicking things off, talking a little bit of earnings, talking a little Netflix, talking about a VIX destructo palooza. VIX is dead. Long live the VIX. All that, uh, all that fun stuff. Tesla puts funky Yandex call action still going on out there. A lot of earnings for the rest of the week. So a lot for you guys to sink your teeth into uh, there, as well as Uncle Mike and his ongoing love affair with calendar synthetics and all the other good stuff going on out there. And wrapping it up with a little bit more looking ahead, so as we like to do. And on Thursday, if you can't tell, we're mixing up the schedule a little bit. We're going to start doing some strategy blocks on Monday. I think that works better for Uncle Mike. Probably better for you guys, too. Thursday, we'll get all your questions in on the old mail block. So look forward to that. Keep those questions coming. we love to hear from you. Before we go, let's hear from our own cohorts one last time. See what they have cooking. Start with you, Mr. Uncle Mike. What is cooking in the land of Mr. Tucson? Well, we just had our uh, March, I'm sorry, our April meetup. <clears throat> the other night for the St. Charles Investing Club. We'll be announcing the one for May shortly. Uh, and with that, if there is anybody that's looking to work with a financial advisor who is not afraid of the word call spread, feel free to give me a call, 312-212-3531, or shoot me an email at mtosaw at rcmfs.com. And you know, Uncle Mike, I forgot to mention this to you. Uh, I was out in the suburbs this weekend, and I did drive past the Skippy's. Apparently, they are a little bit closer Ooh. than Aurora's. There's actually one in Naperville, apparently. Who knew? It's big time. So uh, I, I was already past it when I saw it. Otherwise, I would have just done a Yui right there off the highway and just gone, got myself some tasty, delicious gyros and lemonade. I'll have to wait till next time, unfortunately. And I know they don't have such things as ethnic food in Maine, Mr. Rock Lobster, but perhaps they have uh, some cool stuff coming from the land of the pit. What are you guys working on? Uh, well, you know, of course, we have VXX Made Easy will be coming out uh, soon as a class. So maybe people might be interested to also explain what happened on our big vol blow up. Uh, my vol newsletter is doing well, and I'm happy uh, the, subscri the subscriber base is growing every week. So I'm thrilled. Um, another thing I would say is what Tucson was saying, go try to find your local options club. I spoke to a couple options clubs in the Silicon Valley, SVOG and TOPS. You can Google both of those. Silicon Valley Option Group or TOPS, T-O-P-S. Um, and a lot of good information shared, uh, casual atmosphere. So if you have an option club around you or you want to learn about options, you know, if you can't do this show, um, the meetings look very informative. So try your local option group. That's what I would say. Go find. Go give those a try. Uh, nice people, uh, you know, well-informed and uh, they're like trying to do what everybody else does, try to make money trading options. So I think it's uh, it's it's definitely worthwhile trying to check out one if there is one around you. So I would just Google them. Just went to the two in uh, the Silicon Valley, and uh, and I like both of them. So anyway, that's what I say. Go check them out. Check them out. There you go. Check out your local. Seek out a little bit of uh, local options fun. Now, I like to think of this show as kind of everyone's collective national and international options group. If you like a little bit of in-person time and, God forbid, you're not in St. Charles. I mean, who isn't in St. Charles? Then you find your own uh, options club. There are quite a few. Talking to Russell over there at Cebo, he goes hither and yon, does all this stuff in Honolulu. There's out in the forests and hinterlands of Kamloops in British Columbia. You can find them anywhere. So chances are, if you live where people are, chances are there's an options club near you. Search it out. And let us know. If you find a good one, let us know. Maybe we'll look into it and talk about it on the show. It'll be a fun one. All right. And on behalf of The Rock Lobster and Uncle Mike and indeed myself, I want to thank all of you out there in the listening audience, downloading, streaming, subscribing, all the good stuff that you do. And we'll see you next time for more of The Option Block.
The preceding program was a production of the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. 